Series E. Series E. Series E. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Series E. Series E. Apex Legends. Series E. Apex Legends starts right now. Well, looks like we are loaded into the ship. This is game number one out of five here for the final weeks of uh, qualifiers for Series E. And it's all going to be played on World's Edge. We are on board with, uh, by a scan, but it's okay. We do have, of course, the nerfs going down to Bloodhound. And so there's going to be four more seconds if the uh, Beast of the Hunt is up now. Ooh, the ult is hitting real good. But as they try to push up, it's going to be Sneak trying to hold the line with Celos right behind him. But there's a crack there. They're getting shot through it once again. Celos goes down. It's all up to Sneak here. But as he falls, he will not be revived because that's the entire team gone now. But SOB. It was Scurry who went down, and now it's ERG on the hunt for them, making that fast rotation over from Dome now. Close to the zone, the more that they fight, the less opportunity they have to get to the middle. So they just get out of there. They have great armors right now, but as they do that, they're already a team of the donut. Cupsy opening up with the knock already. That's going to be Bambino and his squad just completely. It looks like we have Rakanisha, and you like that, mate. They're sitting in second place. They're no strangers to open up big fights and take it from the five players to watch. Just look at these nice shots. That was massive because we saw at the onset of that fight Oni uh, damage, but uh, now it looks like they do have to be careful. But as we go over to sorting, it's going to be you like that, mate, in a big fight, but Ooh. they've already cleaned it up. To see if they were able to recover uh, Scurry ever. Oh boy, but here's a big fight. You've been taken on. Did we make it? And they've already got two knocked. It's all at the Stoony, but no, they did not make it. They get cleaned yes. up there. Stick. It looked like it connected, but no, Scurry's going to be able to get that Q and get on out. And so we do have confirmation. Scurry was brought right back into this fight now as Blitzen trying to hold it down with this R301. He's also got the Prowler to work with right now if they bring it any closer. Thermite connects onto Blitzen as he's able to back away. Here comes the Nace trying to slow them down, but it looks like everyone's just focused on Scurry. Bambino will take him out. Evoy Roddy takes out wow. Omu, and Blitzen wow. finally falls and aim assist that we were expecting a lot more out of, right? They had a big performance in ALGS, but they have been able to replicate it here we have a big fight for Solafide. Clarify is already knocked. Yeah, knocks on both sides right there. And Abby, and the knock starts off with nades onto Yubin. Yeah, big damage coming out. Yubin started it off with a lot of damage as well, but now here comes a third party. And I think this is why it's become such a dirty fight. Pride getting in on this here as he's able to get a decent devotion spray down. It's going to be up to Clarify though. He's able to full heal on up and get back into Yeah, it looks like Protectional Squad Dirty Dan wasn't able to get out of that situation. They got picked off by two separate teams. Tough rotation for them. Maybe not predicting where the zone's going to pull. And speaking of a pull, you can see for Dude's Night Out, got a chance to watch these guys play over the weekend. Nice knock right there from Aves on the Fat Fruit Ninja. They have a long way to go, so they need to start clearing things out, and they need to do it immediately, starting with this knock. Yeah, they've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Just one minute left. Well, 50 seconds now. As Dude Night Out, they've got to loot fast and they've got to make a decision on how to get in. There's really only one option here and it's going to be straight down the line. And there isn't too much cover to work with. Once they get behind that rock, we know, we know that Solo Fide is going to be able to watch out to the north hand side. They don't have to really worry about uh, their south either. And so I love that position, Solafide taking it. They really cut down the fighting angle to basically about 90 degrees that they have to keep an eye out for. And you like that, mate, is doing half the job for them right now, trying their best to gatekeep all the teams to the north right now. Yeah, this is tough for Crummy because his portal's not going to be up in time. So they're going to have to hold the spot down for as long as possible and do a last second Gibraltar bubble as they make their move. I don't think that they're going to have to worry about the teams below them. They should just worry about the teams that are up top because of the fact that they have this high ground. So they are going to have to just poke these players that are across from them. Right now, they don't have to worry about the teams down low to the left. They just need to book it and stay up on top and then throw down a bubble. So it looks like they're going to elect to fight the team underneath. 
Yeah, and it's Team Zara Tricky. That's right underneath them, it looks like. No, it's Oso Rated Squad. Oso Rated R Squad right now, as uh, they are and cleaned up Zara Tricky as well on the kill feed right now, as it comes down to six squads left, and they do find a nice little pocket there. They started off, like you said, with that Gibraltar bubble, but oh no, Solofide loses one. It's gonna be Aves coming in, but Dude's Night Out will get finished off this time around. As uh, Muffins is able to hold the line for his squad, we're now down to three. You like that, mate, on the low ground. They've got the bubble to work with if they want to. Here comes the port now as Rakanishu wants to try and get aggressive. They know there's the knock. They want to finish this off here. 98, that's a huge shot coming out with that Mastiff. And it looks like they'll be able to clean that one up very shortly here. You like that, mate. Looking to finish this off, but no, no. Farmer Lucas gets in on this. They have to remember that there is a third team involved and Rakanishu gets pushed. The Pride. And might have done it, and you like that, mate, will be able to take the first game of the day with a number of kill points also under their belt. And so what a way to start off tonight's first five games. But it looks like the gas is going on the dropship as we are heading into game number two. They're going against a team that has some really solid armor, so they're going to have to be careful. Flying drone getting aggressive. Nice third-party shots coming in there with 6-2. This guy is absolutely insane with his aiming and his tracking. Meanwhile, SOB with a fight happening on over towards this Harvester side. We were talking about how fast-paced Game 1 was, Jameson. Game 2 seeming to be around the same. A lot of fights happening already before this first round closing. Yeah, we've got about three fights going on right now. As you like that, mate, it looks like they were able to actually pinch uh, Loose Moose, who they themselves uh, were able to uh, keep, I think it was TSS, uh, pinched off there, but now it's gonna be SOB to finish off their fight, and so we are down to 17 squads with 47 players remaining, and that is a Harvester fight. It's gotta be rather safe for them, as, uh, you like that, mate, with control over No Name right now, but we know that the ring should be continuing to pull up to the Northwest. As you like that, mate, on the rotation, do get scanned out. They're giving No Name a decent wide breath. I like how Crummy is playing this. Matt Pickett's got the roof. And Saucer with that EMP, we'll see if they have a timing to try and take advantage of this, but Panders isn't able to open up well as he's already forced to reset here. It looks like another team might be trying to get involved in this fight as well right now as Panders playing this a little bit cautiously, gets some decent damage off, but his armor's cracked. He's not going to port back as Saucerer goes down. That's going to be Kovsky with the Mastiff to take him out now. And now things have turned south for Flying Drone here as their execution on that fight just was not clean enough. With Saucerer down with him on the roof, he's not going to be able to port out as well. Here comes an EMP from another squad. Who's getting involved in this one? Tech now is going to be low. Flying Saucer, excuse me, Flying Drone. They've already lost two. That was... SZN coming in now, and it's all up to Panthers to try and stay alive for as long as possible, but he's not even going to make it into the top 15. Flying Drone go down off the back of an uncoordinated team fight. Um, Ultimate Excels to use as well. Uh, on board with Free Smoke, who are continuing their fight here uh, on the southeast side of the map. SZN, it's going to be Kenzie setting it up for the EMP. He's going to pop that one down as they back away. They've got the Watson generator to help them Natty heal that up. But instead, they just pop the bats and pop the heals and go in and try to turn around on them. But looks like they're happy with just thwarting this attack for now. Things might slow down, but here comes a scan out as Bane is going to drop in. And they have to be careful. Multiple teams are involved in this. As you can see now, Loose Moose tries to back away. But no, they're getting hunted down. And it looks like Loose Moose just getting punished here. Free Smoke back away off that fight. They didn't pick up all the kills that they wanted, but of course they don't want to overextend. It's all up to six here on that Gibraltar. Try and hold it down with that bubble fight. It's not going to be enough for him as just too many teams coalesced onto them right now. And they do get punished off of that. On a board with Solo Fide, it looks like they have a, a, a really good firm grasp of that north side, rock side hold as SOB still in this fight. It's gonna be Matt Pickett's team getting involved as well. So many teams just kind of funneling in here onto the south side, Tom. Yeah, you can see Klain has a couple of shots that he didn't like and immediately gets out of there. I have no idea where those ones were heading. It looked like the recoil really just getting the best of them right there, but no opportunity to 
make your rotation if you haven't gotten in here yet. You can see so many teams on this side of the map right now. Jamerson just bloodbaths all over the place. The Dorito building is a great building to lock down right here. That's why they're trying to get into it. But again, uh, a triple take, I believe. It looks like no. That was going to be an R301 from across the map from Nano Fries living up to his name. And they just leave him, say, sorry, man. This group is too off. Yeah, and looks like SCN, they want to try and finish this wall. One off, free smoke, really trying to get that thirst, and they will uh, be able to get it onto you, Gem, as uh, Kenny himself will pick up a kill on to Wazizi. As uh, we go back up north, you like that, mate? They've lost Crummy in this fight, and so now they are down to two. It doesn't look like there's any respawn beacons as well for them to try and utilize, as uh, they'll take way too much damage. They don't have a Wraith port, and so it's just not a possibility to try and get Crummy into this. But never count out a duo. There is still a chance for them to fight back, especially right now. We know that a large majority of the teams are to the south, and so this is largely an isolated fight for them. As uh, they are taking some damage, Rakanishu, he's going to be able to pop that cell. And they're doing enough damage to try and keep them pinned. And the aggression isn't coming as quickly as possible. There's f about seven more seconds left on that bubble for Rakanishu to try and use. But they don't really have the guns for it as well. They don't have the shotgun. They don't have the it. massive picket. Oh, he got the big knocks. And now they're trying to. Rakanishu is backing him up. It's a 1v2 right now, but he's not able to get the damage. And he will fall. As they try to take advantage of that knock onto Protectful, but it just wasn't enough. And so they will go down in the top 10. So that's going to put a slow to them for now. Back on board with Solofide as they have lost Pride. It looks like they may be able to recover his banner. Yep, they've got, of course, the Crypto. And there is a respawn beacon for them to use within range as well. So we'll see. They go instantly for that. But they try to buy some time. Oh, they got to go for it now. There's 15 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, there's another fight happening other towards this building. This team really needs this big time sitting in seventh place. It's going to be Kenny SCN going down. Not what you want to see if you're lying. You know that these guys have an opportunity to make a rotation over here. One big game could be all they need to get into that sixth or fifth spot. spot that aim assist is not OP and Solofide are in. Meanwhile, this team right here, SOB, is definitely dominating the lobby. Anmu specifically is the kill leader. Six frags already, seven people watching him in the top right. Going to toss out that defensive bombardment. That's going to cover his back. 22 seconds to the dome, so they have to just bob and weave until then. So they're going to off the play the two crates. One grenade would just completely dominate them. So we'll see what happens. They don't have any type of defense here until that dome comes up. So I really like this play just to hit cells, bob and weave. And this is how you have a presence, Jamerson, when you have nothing to do. You can't just turtle in that instance. You can't add no pressure. You just have to lay down shots and fend for your life, get other people scared and stop looking where you're at. That's what they do, buy themselves some time. And now they're going to move to the next spot. Yeah, Solofide are trying to buy some time, but SOB are pushing forward off this. They know there's a knock, and now it looks like Pride will get finished off. Muffins had that drone out, but the EMP is just way too late, and Solofide will go down in the top six, but here comes the other third party. SOB trying to take advantage of this, but Omu, he gets blitzed. He'll go down as uh, Dirty Dan are trying their best, but right now SOB are able to hold it down and they will be able to clean up Dirty Dan, but they lost Onmu in the process and they might lose one more. This is the third party train as Hell God Sent are getting in on the party. They'll be able to finish them off and now we're down to the top three here as we see that ring once again pulling to the northwest. God Sent might not be in the ring, but there's still plenty of time for them. There's plenty of room for them to work with. We'll see. It's one six five. They've got the EMP. They've this got the, the caustic gas to work with. This is the spot we see so many teams hold top of this rock, and it's looking good for them. Meanwhile, Nano, he's absolute shambles right now, doing his best E Boy Ronnie impression. But Amaze, it's all up to him and his caustic barrels. Meanwhile, you have nades on the EMP. This could be their game. They need these points. They need to hold this down with this perfect positioning that they have. We know that it's Ooh. one rat. Nice 72 open damage right there. That's going to give them information on where the rest of these players are. Love the grenades coming out too. This could be their moment, Jamerson. 
Yeah, they're getting pressured by the zone right now. And so because of the nades to the left, they have to hook on over to the right. They are here on the low ground. The Watson generator does go caustic down gas. for them as well. But this is the caustic gas. Will they be able to get it down safely? Remember, the generator is down there right now. Strictly also has the portal, but they're playing this cautiously. They're, they know there's a third team involved, but they don't have the Bloodhound scan. So it's not the safe for them. But here comes the EMP. Do they execute off of this or do they still hold the high ground? Nice Here's the caustic play. gap that it connects onto them. Does so much damage to split them off. And that's going to be two already going down. One, Woo. six, five. Now just need to clean up the last rep as he shows his face. He knows he made it to top two and he is happy with that. It will be one, six, five. Stealing this one away with excellent positioning. And of course, a farewell wave to the last Wraith in the lobby. 165 will be your winners of game number two. Yeah, what a play there from 165. Phenomenal teamwork. You see the perfect EMP coming across. You see the zone was perfect. The, the arch of the EMP was exactly where his teammates were while still hitting the players underneath them that's going to give them enough time to throw down the caustic ult they all drop down at the same time like you said jamerson it split them up they focus to gibraltar first then they converge and pinch the other two the last rat just sends it into the zone there 165 really showing some great teamwork towards the end of that game yeah, this is a team that we got to see more and more throughout our qualifiers and towards the tail end of our weekly uh, weeklies, right? And so I like to see the improvements that's coming out of them. And that was just a perfect ending for them. And it looks like their just understanding of the macro has been really good. Um, each In two games so far, they predicted the ring. They were able to get the position on it. On it. In the first game, they did end up getting evicted out of their spots, but this time they hold it down. And they'll be able to hold it down to get 10 kill points along with the plus 12 so that's going to be 22 for them oni though even though they were able to make it to second right it to second they're only able to pick up one kill point along the way and god sent they were getting into fight after fight will end up in third place with seven kill points overall sob though gave them a run for their money take a look at that tom they were able to pick up 12 kill points along with getting fourth place yeah, just super unfortunate there for SOB that they couldn't keep up the momentum. They got third partied. Mainly they lost Amu as he took a lot of damage from behind. He threw the bubble down. Protectful charged inside the bubble. He wasn't expecting that. His teammates left around to finish the other two players off. And then they get third partied there from Godsent. But you're right, 165. Two times in a row, getting into the god spot, getting into the perfect position. I think, you know, if aim assist is not OP, can make it E-boy Ronnie. I think, I feel like Team cheese it because rats love cheese, right? Would be a suitable, <laughs> suitable team for them. Bubble is even going to be able to pop a heal. Scurry on the outside, though. He's separated from his team. They have to be careful in how they approach this right now, as it's going to be Team Krabby Patty making this push. Currently, the scans are out from both sides, and so now it's going to be about who gets the entry, who gets that first frag, and really snowball off of it. SOB, they've been able to reconnect, and now they're in the building together, and they're going to go for a peek onto the roof at the same time here. Both teams just really calculating each other's moves right now, and it's a game of positioning more than anything else right now. This is what we expect at the high levels. This is what we're expecting out of our partner teams. Right now, good focus fire coming out. Scurry and Onmu are able to focus Moose and down, take him out. And now it looks like the dominoes are falling as they're trying to push up. Moosen's down, Yubin's down. It's all up to scissors here. Are going to drop. Meanwhile, their center zone sitting pretty top of the circle here. And you can see Zeratricky and Hakulo, Mercy, and a nice little fight over here. Looks like they're going to be able to have some great damage on the SOB. One player alive. It's going to be Scurry who gets two knocks. Is he going to be able to pull this one off? A little 1v1 right here. He still gets the armor swap. Three versus one. SOB pulling that one off. It's going to be your boy Scurry, but immediate third party coming in. It's going to be Did We Make it coming in with Caustic Girls. That's your bolts roll. Not going to hit because of the fact that they're so... And it looks like Did We Make It are going to commit to this now. There's no other play but to commit to it as the defensive bombardment comes down. GS, uh, GS Bird takes a lot of damage. His armor's crap. He's dropped down to 50 HP. He does have gold, so he'll be able to pop the cells for now. But this high ground, they're still not getting pushed off yet. Muffins is a little bit low, but Clarify is going to cover for him. And now it's going to be the hard, hard push up towards the high ground here. 
And then three more seconds, the zone will stop start closing and Clarify continues to put down the damage. They're just gonna go ahead and port out, abort out of this push. And that is the right call. That saves both teams now as Solofide are on the move as well. I like this play from Solofide there into the last second and now rotating with the zone. Yes, you're not gonna get a lot of information in front of you, but most importantly, you're doing exactly this, is closing your back off to what's behind you and then focusing the players in front of you that are rotating in. Great heads up play from Solofine, results in a lot of easy kills on the rotation. Textbook plays here from them, but Clarify gonna get picked off across the map with a hemlock of all things. There's still four squads remaining here. Clarify though has been pushing in so much damage now, but Solofide get a re-rotation in. And there they are at the low ground, Muffins. He's on that drone. He's going to be able to suss out decent information for him right now, but it's the right-hand side. Three pushing up. Clarify peeks on over, but he did enough damage to try and dissuade them. Go ahead and drop down some fences in case someone tries to drop down, but take a look at where the ring pulls. It goes towards the platform, and so this is going to be a difficult, difficult task for Solofide as on the other side, they're already in position to hold the ring and the high ground cannot be contested unless they can get this climb up. Yeah, if the high ground team plays this smart, they're gonna wait for the next zip line to come through and they shouldn't take damage here. I'm not sure why they're running back and forth for absolutely no reason. They should just be waiting, forcing these other oh. teams to go and push into one another. And now they're just peeking and giving up their position. There's literally no reason for these guys to peek or do anything besides sit there Hope that Solofide looks at the other team and gets distracted by them. And now the other team here shots, so they poke out for a second. This is what the other team needs up top. Again, there's no reason to make a move. Lay down a last minute zip line and then just toggle on top of that zip line back and forth, waiting for these two teams to fight down low. Even though you have two players, you have a great opportunity to win this game. Yeah, if they can wait it out see if there's a trade they can just drop down like batman and just finish off the fight right now we still have 40 seconds before everything comes to a head and again it's the pressure on solofide how do they approach this right now there is an opportunity for them to try and push through the left hand side as uh right now the right is just completely controlled but again yeah we do have Must the emp muffin. and rep even though the drone's not quite out the damage markers will give you information, and so you don't have to get visual confirmation with the drone. You can just hit that EMP, and it comes out as they get tagged on the other side. And so we'll see what Muffins can do. He does have Muffins his EMP ready. Now, Here yep. comes the drone. There's five seconds left as the zone is going to start closing now. The port is getting set up as they're tracing that one out, getting ready for it now. We got the high ground and the low ground. They don't have to push, but they're keep leaving themselves with that option here to go if they want to. Here's the zone closing in. The EMP will go ahead and clear all that out. And now we have it's been a while that it might be a heal up. Oh, Ace Nine drops down, takes out Muffins, and it looks like they want to finish them off. We'll see. It looks like Solofide were able to stay alive. And uh, again, the portal was already used, so there's no real option for them to try and punish this, but the zone's going to start closing, and we've got a good old-fashioned heal off. Hit your med kit. What are you doing? Hit your med kit. You hit your medkit way too late. He's definitely dead right there. Needed to hit that thing a couple of seconds before. Instead, he's going to head back to the top. Lay down some damage. Looks like the Wraith is going to queue at the right time. Is he going to be able to out Wraith Klain? I don't think he is. All right. Thank you all for waiting at home, but it looks like we are finally ready for game number four. Two more left. The clues coming out from the passive of that Bloodhound. He's got to be careful there. As he pushes up, he's getting set up for a crossfire. Doesn't have any defensive skills to use, really. But now another team getting involved in this. I don't know if it's actually another team or just a massive, massive uh, separation from the other side. But talking about separation, it's a Bloodhound left out by himself. Ugem able to get the burst, takes out Watson. Blurs now drop down to about 90 HP. There's a bubble coming out from the other end and now things are going so bad for TSS. They took a fight which they thought was isolated. Blurs is gonna be able to back away with that Q and get behind some cover for now, but the crossfire set up, he goes down. Kyun is gonna get out of there with the Beast of the Hunt, but he gets hunted down south, but they're gonna go ahead and put full use of uh, <clears throat> the new crafting system. Well, it's not as new anymore, but the crafting system um, does help out the teams, especially. Yeah, a lot of teams kind of 
uh, gloss over uh, the crafting system, they don't. right? Yeah, uh, especially they don't in... use it at all. So you get a lot of free crafting mats. Like the amount of times, like when I play in regular matches and regular games, like I just get so many mats. I'll have like 200, 300 or something. I don't know. And I'll be able to craft for days. And so Zero Trick, you're I'll... really utilizing that well. I'll be honest. I'm one of the people that just think that it takes too long, really. I'm like, you know. Two, three yeah, it depends on what's in the rotation, right? Yeah, yeah. Like when the I mean, when the Eva Eight was in there. My prowler, yeah, if it's a purple <laughs> bag for my prowler, I'll take it, right? If it's a turbocharger <laughs> for my Havoc or Devotion, give me it. But a lot of times I'm on the move trying to make my way. It is very useful though, especially when you need ammo too. So I like to see the so players fire. utilizing this one. Haculo busting out the wingman massive combo, my favorite combo. To rock i feel like this really offers a lot a lot of firepower a lot of versatility if you hit your shots it's also one of the fastest kill rates for both of these combinations looking over in the back of the buildings you can see mighty gods elects to rotate from their spot over towards the houses where it's a little bit more safe for them and this is where we we're saying if it does pull back here almost a guaranteed top three should be fine but hostiles are detected, and you do see players charging in the vicinity. It's going to be loose moves on the outskirts here. Bane, very far away from his team. While well, it looks like Vuzby is che is checking which way he wants to go and try to peek these guys from. These hits themselves, too, in the meantime. Action really happening everywhere. Again, very brutal circle, Jamerson. If you're not in there, you're going to be fighting a majority of the way to just get over towards them. Yeah, you like that, mate. They don't have that recon, uh, and so they don't have the ring information. And they're trying to take their best guess, and they thought maybe it was over by ring, where they were just rotating in and getting a fight. But it's Loose Moose taking the fight now. They've already got one thirsted off already. That's Gins going down for the Mighty Gods as Vuzby has full control of the building. Now as they push up into Dorito, there's one person cut off. They can go ahead and pinch him. And there it is, the flank coming out from Vuzby. And Six will finish off you, Jam. And so... That's a huge team fight win for Loose Moose. That gives them control over this almost entire quadrant to the southwest now, Tom. So happens when As, you don't uh, have, we do have... you're trying to set up in those buildings. Go ahead. Oh yeah, big fight, big fight. Oh no, two knocks for Dude's Night out. And oh boy, it's going to be an early night as they're sent home by Did We Make It. It's also controlling a very strong position here. It's the northwest side. The choke, another team pushing in. But that push is already going to be thwarted. Did We Make It? They should be able to recover a lot of this loot and back away to these houses. Yeah, and Team Zeratricky getting in on the kill feed as well. 16 squads left. This team electing to eventually make their way from the zip lines. We're in a tough spot. Suni has to go and hit that phase and get out of dodge. Meanwhile, Bird, he's the one laying down the cover fire. You're going to see both knocks happening on the other side as Mollus is going to find one and Muffin's going to find one as well. Six ends up taking over the toilet bowl area where they did hit that scan. And now they can get a nice little third party over here for free as Bane uses a nice portal and Q tactic to lay down some additional pressure. What a great job coming out from Bane as well. You saw Six, he wanted the posture to try and push up to help him out, but he was able to hold his ground, did some damage, and just backed away with that Q. We have 12 teams remaining here, and it's 165 that we're watching now who are down. Oh no, they don't have a maze, and this is one of those circles, again, where the cost could be super helpful. You have a team on top of Big Drill, you also have a team at the bottom of Drill as well. That cost, it can really help hinder their movement, but ha having him out of the game is going to really put a stop to them, as we're now on board with aim assist, not OP. They've got the Watson Jenny down. They're going to be able to survive a lot of the defensive bombardment. Nothing really happening up against them. They have the south side. They're back covered. They just need to watch ahead of them right now. Bambino! What? Musin just melts him down, and that is the power of the R301. He'll be able to get down, but here's the pressure coming out now as Rakanishu will be able to finish him off. And now it's going to be a 3v2. There is the port. Aim assist. Dracos! Will be the next to fall, and what do you know? It's gonna be E Boy Ronnie once again left to his lonesome here. This is gonna be a difficult rat because we know there are a lot of teams still in the area for him. Take a look at that. You like that, mate? We'll be able to finish him off, and oh boy, 
They thought they had their northwest cleared, but you like that mate moving in very aggressively, and it looks like Ronnie finds the wrap position. But like I said, a lot of teams still in the area too, just ahead of him right now. I have full confidence that Ronnie wins this every single time. I've never seen him lose these. It's actually better that his teammates died so he can just be solo, continue to get more points. I'm just kidding. But at least we got a, a good perspective of what happens when his teammates do go down. He's just on top of realizing that he can't take the fight. And a lot of times it's happening a little bit too fast and other teams and players will try to overextend and try to help your teammates. That'll cost you. And every point really mattering here. So Ronnie doing the heads up play, getting out of there. Not going to be able to recover those banners or get a respawn because of the fact that we're going into zone four. But you like that, mate, coming through here and trying to establish dominance on this northeast side of the map. It looks like there's not many teams over here, which I'm kind of surprised. I thought a team would be holding this platform, but instead they're going to be able to grab a little corner and they're also going to be able to spot on a team underneath the train tracks. You know, E Boy and Ronnie, you know, he's done a full certification course at the Imperial Howe School of Rats. But let's go ahead and talk about Zero Tricky, who are in the middle of a fight right now. Therapy's already down. Zolafide, down a member. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's no time to be playing with your drone when you're getting pushed like that. And oh boy, that's going to be a cleanup coming out from Team Zera Tricky. It's E-Boy Ronnie would now with the opportunity to move up. As uh, that fight took some attention away from him, he's going to try and pick up some loot for himself. There's a red armor, but he's got to heal that one up. On board with you like that, mate, who's controlling the eastern side. Currently, Matt Pickett able to finish off Moose and Flower with that Arc Star. Rakanishu also finishing off SOB. So, you like that, mate, really want to close this out. Want to make sure, of course, stay on top of the leaderboard. We have one more game after this. We're now down to yeah, nine squads. Make that me. eight. <laughs> And 21 players remaining, and this is a terrible circle, by the way, for anyone here on the West, Tom. I'm so shocked that the spot that you like that mate took was open because of the fact that it pulls right in front of them. This platform has so much cover, and all they have to do is walk up with a little Gibraltar bubble, and they're going to be in the zone, and everyone's going to be fighting as they rotate in. So keep a lookout on their positioning, and if they're able to capitalize on this great spot. But did we make it? realizing now that they have a far way to go they're gonna have to deal with these teams on the left on the high ground there's also teams underneath sometimes there's two teams underneath and then you still have pickett's team that's over there on the platform laying down cover too so we'll see what the move is right now did we make it they did a decent job of like controlling their back right they put down the barrels over uh, by the ropes and they pushed forward with an aggressive bubble now they did a lot of damage I was cracking the evos but now they're getting pushed from the right hand side here comes the smoke here comes the ultimates and they will easily clean that one up as uh now they are in position here on the northern side again of course doing their due diligence watching their back checking every angle Really good vigilance coming out from Did We Make It. This is a squad. This was the squad that we were talking about uh, that had that excellent, excellent execute up against um, up against Matt Pickett's team a couple of weeks ago uh, and uh, stole a victory away from them. Right now, though, this isn't about stealing the victory. It's about just completing it out. They have the high ground. They've got, of course, the caustic to work with. We'll see if they can find some ultimate excels, maybe get GS Bird up, get that defensive bombardment down. This game's absolutely crazy, Jamerson, because I think we have a lot of our teams fending for one position. Is Sung's going to get a knock right there? And I think that was onto one player from Free Smoke, if I'm not mistaken. No, 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 that's that's a different player. Free Smoke, I think, is all alive. So that's going to be one player from Solafide. If we could scroll through the rest of the players and see exactly where they are going to be at. There's Free oh. Smoke. Yes, that was a player from Free Smoke. That was Lion staying alive, not hitting any cells. Two rats and then two teams in good positions. Oh, it's you like that, mate, on the low ground. And we'll see if they can finesse a win up against Did We Make It? We saw this matchup again. This time around, though, the, the calculations are a little bit harder. You have two rats on the field who can really affect uh, the way this one ends. You can see, I don't know if uh, that ring pulls away from the high ground. 
but that's some good damage coming across the Thermite connecting onto Rakanishu. He does have the gold armor, and so these cells are going to be enough for now. He doesn't have his defensive bombardment. Here comes the Caustic Gas. This wow, time they used it already. Onto them. Oh, here's the drop with the port play as well. We'll see if they're trying to kidnap someone, abduct him. Stinny has to back away and pop that cell. And I like the timing out of it, right? It's not where you have no options. You still have 20 seconds. And so it was just a poking, prodding teleport. Really surprised to see Bird and Sung use the resources right there, especially Sung there, who's popping the ultimate excel, trying to get another caustic gas up immediately. That was their opportunity to really push these guys out. They missed the ult. Could have used it potentially behind these blue trucks, but they're just going to play the edge of the cliff, which is barely in Jamerson. This is great news for Did We Make It. Hopefully the rats get spot out and distracted by the other team. They're going to be able to drop down here shortly and make the play that they want. They have the high ground. The ring will pull away from them. We'll see if they can get that caustic gas up, that uh, Nox gas grenade. Let's see exactly. Remember, we have one more rat in play here. They do have to worry about that. It might just be free damage for them. There comes out a bubble. It took a lot of damage. Now we have Pride going down. It's going to be a full 3v3, but the damage, the health is in favor of Did We Make It? Bird gets the knock onto Rakanishu, and Matt Pickett's the only one left. And did we make it? You did. They take game number four. All right, we're about to load into the final game of our qualifiers. And you mentioned there are so many different, different kind of tabulations for how this can all work out. Their option is to just hightail it out of there and run. But what are you going to do when you're running around with no cells? You have to take this fight, and that's exactly what they do. This team is infiltrating the building fast. Minion Series E life on the line for this fight. They're trying their best to control all the openings right now. That's a huge crack coming out from hundreds there with that Mastiff. That might have dissuaded them just enough. But here's the Thermite taking him down, and he is all out of heals. Again, they do have the cost of gas that they can work with to try and control a little bit more space. That last canister going a bit too wide there. And there is the shots coming out from Scurry. He's got the Spitfire damage coming across and does it. Taking hundreds down. They've got the 3v2. SOB are moving in. The 88, you saw the head rocking back as he gets hit. Like a great truck. And now they're going to be able to clean that up. Casellos will go down. SOB, though, they do slow things down. They don't want to overstep their bound. They want to make sure they get this clean ending here. They don't want to get third partied as it is starting to come out here. And that was the big issue that they wanted to deal with. And so they have backed away. They're trying to control their sides. But it's a full team. The damage is there. Aggressive bubble coming out from Omu as he tries to push up. He knew that the Wraith was isolated. But they're not going to be able to actually get that quite yet. Team Fire is there. Moosin takes out one. On moves down. And they get cleaned up. And oh no. SOB. They were one of those bubble teams that were on the fringes that were... Shortly. This seems to be the theme in these final games. Everybody realizing what they need to do. And that's put up some big kills. The fourth party coming in. This is going to be oh so rated. He takes the first down. And the rest of these guys here to follow. Mastiffs everywhere. Yubin gets another one. He gets knocked as well. Moose in the last guy alive. Trying to get this finish in armor swap. Can he bop it off? He does. Gets the blue. Tries to find this last player. Also going to hit a bubble res really fast. Heads up plays coming in for Moose in like this. And Yubin's also going to be able to do some pings on where the final player is going to be. Really big plays it's here for Krabby Patty if they can live through this finish there. Will they be able to get the res? That's going to be important if they can do so and get him healed right back up. Meanwhile, it's Godset with another fight happening over towards this fragment side. Bubble down. ADSing over here. One Hemlock burst should completely rip. Does take a little bit of damage, but not as much as we were anticipating. A little bit of missed shots here, but the Hemlock is great for these little skirmishes here. Especially if you're able to hit all the bursts. Switch on over to the Prowler, though. It's going to be Mercy only from the Zeratricky squad. Zeratricky finds another knock too. Godsend on their heels here with the last player alive. It's going to be Kupski now in a two-on-one situation. Doing his best and doing a darn good job. But all players flying in have full armor. So not able to pull that one out. But a nice effort there for Godsend and Kupski. Boy, back up. And Bambino, welcome back into the game. Nice Thermite there, but even nicer R301 shots. From your boy Scissors there from Krabby Patty. Fun team to watch, very aggressive team. 
I'd like to see if they're going to continue to push inside a Harvester, and they are taking over this middle ground so they can just trap this team inside of the building. Maybe going for a capture. We've been looking at these captures fairly often. Instead, just going to put the four outside the door. Talking about how aggressive they are. This is what we're talking about. You have to watch out for the third party to end this one fast. Moosin loses all of his armor, so they're going to back off. But I like the aggressive play. Again, we talked about this. This is how you get better. By adding pressure, seeing what your team's made of, and focusing on infiltrating buildings on teams that are set up. At this point, it's been a long marathon for him, especially for E-Boy Ronnie. On board with Zara Tricky, though. They were trying to push in, and they're not able to clear that drone. They take a lot of damage, especially Mercy only, but he does have the bubble down. But the Caustic Gas is doing a lot of work on him. He, Mercy only is going to get pushed now as Mr. Haculo tries to hold it down for him. The retreat is there, but now Mercy only will fall. Mr. Haculo might be the next one to go as he pops that Q and tries to get out of dodge but they're gonna have to leave mercy only as they don't have a port and haculo goes down and zara tricky i think they had a good fight until that emp happened it's all up to zara tricky for his team but he's getting peppered away from every single angle tom Tough spot there for Team Zeratricky. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to grab these banners. If he does, one respawn left inside of the zone. Going to have to probably rat this one out and hit a medkit here very soon. But does lay down some shots from the players behind the rock. Maybe to try to get some space for himself as he makes his way over towards these banners. It would be an absolutely insane play if he decides to go with this one. Meanwhile, on board with Solafide sitting in third place right now. Looking good, too. They have this train track area. Decent armors. Multiple players trapped over here. Watson Gen down. That would have been a fantastic thermite grenade there by Muffins. But instead, great defensive play coming out by the other team behind this area. Whoever wins this spot is going to have a good advantage for pushing down over towards the train tracks area. And they're going to have a lot of lines of sight for whatever's in front of them. Zeratricky does get that banner. Gets some loot on the way, too. So very important for him to make sure that he gets cells. But here's the push. It's going to be Clarify going in on a protectful. Yeah, they got the knock on to him, and so they instantly try to punish, but they've got to be careful as Clarify has to reset. He's going to go ahead and pop that bat, but Brian wants to keep pushing. He gets cracked for it, and he will fall, but it's a 2v1. Oh, no. Another team might be getting involved in this right now as Muffins is having trouble finishing him off, but there it is. They are able to clean up that fight. The armor swap comes out. And now they need to reset. They need to get the heals off. As you can see, Muffins, he takes the high ground for himself, looks around and makes sure it's safe for him to do so. Pride will get res by Clarify. Zero Tricky still in this as he scans it on out. It's a 3v1 right ahead of him. And it looks like he's going to get finished off, but he's not going to go down without a fight. 165 loses Nathan. Zero Tricky backs away off of this. He tries to bat, but he's getting peppered down. No armor swaps for him. And Zeratricky will go down. It's E-Boy Ronnie to pick that one up. He's still alive. He's Huge. still doing it, Tom. Huge plays by Ronnie. I mean, they could have gotten eliminated. Now they get an extra placing in over towards the top five. They get a kill point on top of that. Free Smoke's the team that they're duking it out with. And Free Smoke has fantastic positions. So however many points Ronnie gets, Free Smoke has to make up. And Free Smoke's in one of the best positions to win this game. And Ronnie getting taken out. In fifth place, they're going to see that. And who else besides 165 who's been there the entire time? But here it is. It's up to Free Smoke going up against Krabby Patty. If Free Smoke wins this game, it's going to really throw a wrench in the standings. We'll see what happens. Big fight on top of this top bridge. And it opens up with 165 with the triple take. Oh, boy. They took a lot of damage there. You've been going down through that caustic gas. They just tanked that up. Solofide's got this high ground right now, Tom, and they're doing a decent job of holding it. Muffins, he's in that drone right now as Clarify is going to go ahead and pop that ultimate cell for himself. They're going to have that Natty Gen to work with, as uh, along with the nades that are coming out. They need to go ahead and pop this down, but instead they're going to hold off for now and just set up for next fight instead. They're not under too much pressure. They've got cover to work with. We're down to four squads. And it's all three mans. And so it's going to be big battles here. So we've got another 45 seconds before this zone forces them to move. Big zone here. Deciding who's going to move on to Series E. Is it going to be Free Smoke? Is it going to be Aim Assist is not OP? Solafide trying to have a say in this one. 
as they have the full squad ready to go and hit this rotation. Amazing shots there onto the drone. You're going to be able to take that one, which means that the EMP not going to be available for the next 20 seconds as this one starts to close. But Muffins ready for his EMP instead. Going to put this one through the smoke. Get ready and hit this one as you do have Clarify hit, hitting that alt excel too. So they're going to a great spot here to try to make some pressure. And there's the play coming up on top of this yellow platform. Clarify takes so much damage that he has to hit a battery. That could be Free Smoke up there. No, it's 165. So 165 getting down means that Free Smoke is somewhere waiting to third party this. And wow, what a way that Solofide do this as well. You saw two of them were just completely out of energy ammo. And so they had to push forward with the Mastiffs. Muffins was able to find one knock with it. Now we're down to the final two squads here. Crabby Patty on the low ground. We got Solofide on the high as Pride is trying to buy some time for his squad to get those med kits off for them to make the drop here. They want to finish this one out. They were able to recover some energy ammo to work with, but I'm, I think it's going to just come down to the shotguns here. Here comes the Natty Heels as Pride doesn't have any shields to work with, and so they're going to try and regen as they regroup here. Next minute and 30 seconds to work with. You see the zone pulling away from them as well as we get Pride twice on the screen, but it looks like Solo Fide. They might be able to take this. The ultimate Excel Muffins was popping it for a quick second there, so he might have the EMP ready for this fight. Now, the scan comes out. The EMP is getting prepped and primed for McCarthy. It comes down to this final team fight here in game number five, the week four of qualifiers for Series E. Can Solafide close it out with a win? Again, they started it all off in week number two. Krabby Patty, though, really trying to come up with a huge upset. And they've been doing it in a big way, taking team fight after team fight. Things really slowing down as you can see the Thermite in the hands of Pride. They don't have a Watson on the other side, so they can't block this. Let's see if he gets a big connect right now. 30 seconds, Tom. Yeah, if this gen goes away, then Yubin's going to be able to Kobe a Thermite. Meanwhile, you have Solafide with a Thermite in oh, hand no. as well, but that gets eaten by his own gen. Here comes the EMP coming in. That means they're going to drop at the same time. A Q coming out from Pride means he's going to have to just gather information from the rest of the guys. Muffins gets the first knock, clear if he gets the second. There it is, Solafide coming in with the W. Big game from them. That's gonna lock in their spot for Series E. The big question is, is it gonna be Free Smoke or Aim Assist not OP coming in and taking over that final spot? Yeah, so let's see. It will be Solafide. They qualified twice, by the way, now first week and in the fourth week. And so congratulations to them. They will take that win, and they do earn that spot. Um, and most importantly, most importantly, I believe um, they were not in our top six, and so nothing moves there, really. Uh, and so they earn that spot. They take that win. And so it's going to be our top five. It's going to, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our overall cumulative leaderboard when we can. But yeah, there it is. Team Zara Tricky. Team, you like that, mate. BFF. Aim Assist is not OP. And did we, and did make, we make it? it? Well, you guys made it. Hey, there you go. Team name really coming through at this point there. I'm not sure if you had a different team name. You probably wouldn't have made it, but feel bad for frog for free smoke they were so close three points for frog free smoke was one minute away from winning that last game if they would have got three placement points on the kill on a wipe of the squad down below plus if they would have got that one extra placement that would have gave them enough points losing that team fight means they don't make it into series z and that's how intense these games get congratulations to team zero tricky you like that mate bff aim assist not op and did we make it but if you made it to the finals or if you made it at all during the qualifiers congratulations to you too yeah, so what exactly does it mean to be a partner team? Well, you see those nine brands up top. We'll be working with our team, so go ahead and place them in the proper brand. We've got a questionnaire, questionnaire out uh, for them to answer, and they're going to be on one of those partner teams. That means during the regular season of Series E, which will take place, um, I, could, I think, starting next week, we got 12 weeks of play. We've got a lot of signed pro teams that will also be competing, but during that time, all nine of our teams, all 27 of our players will be earning $500 a month. Also, having the opportunity to regularly play against the 
best teams in Apex Legends to level up alongside with them as we go through Series E, as we go through the ALGS Autumn Circuit. This is a very important moment for a lot of these players, for all of these teams. Yeah, special thanks to EA, special thanks to Respawn, special thanks to all the players that competed, special thanks to the production crew over at Esports Arena. Jamerson, you've done a fantastic job, but also hats off to all of these teams that made it. I can't wait, wait to see which teams they get partnered with. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. So make sure you're, of course, following all of our socials while we make the announcements as we partnered these teams, as we pair them off with the right brands. And so really exciting times ahead of us. We got a lot of Apex Legends coming up. We got some things also in the weekend that we're doing, Tom. So really excited for all the esports action that we've got here in the Apex Legends scene. And like you said, thank you, everyone. But most importantly, thank you all at home who have been tuning in week in, week out. We've got 12 more weeks of the regular season and so we'll see you then we'll see you guys next week that's gonna do it for us have a good night Thank <laughs> you.